is Maya, and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm posting content on scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to be notified of new videos, which I'm publishing weekly. Craftsmanship, detail, and luxury, just a few words that come to mind when thinking of Hermes. Whether you're just starting a scarf collection or new to Hermes scarves altogether, some of you have asked me why Hermes and not other brands. Well, I'm not an expert in other brands, but I can tell you why I prefer Hermes scarves and haven't really felt compelled to stray away from the house. I'll give some general background on Hermes if you're not already familiar, talk about all that goes into their scarf designs, and specifically what I find so appealing about their collections. Founded in 1837, Hermes started as a bespoke equestrian bridle and harness workshop. Today, it's one of the most recognized luxury houses, which remains true to its equine roots with this motif incorporated in so many of their handbags, clothes, accessories, and more. Self-described contemporary artisans, the family-owned house of Hermes represents six generations of artisanal creativity and innovation. The house currently has 16 métiers or specialities that fuse inventiveness with exceptional know-how. These range from leather goods and equestrian, of course, to men's and women's silk and ready-to-wear, watches, jewelry, tableware, and more. Hermes objets are manufactured mainly in France across 51 production sites, including 19 leather workshops focused on saddlery and leather goods. But on to the scarves, which debuted at the height of Parisian fashion in 1937, a century after the House of Hermès was founded. Robert Dumas, who was Émile Hermès' son-in-law, designed the first carré, Jeu des Omnibus et Dames Blanches, which used woodblock. Made with pure Chinese silk, the Hermès scarves quickly caught on with a fashionable set for their intricate patterns and attention to detail. Like everything Hermes, the scarf making process is arduously detailed. To make a 90 by 90 centimeter scarf requires the silk from 300 mulberry moth cocoons, each of which yields a single unbroken 1500 meter long silk strand. That's 450 kilometers of silk thread. Fun fact, the length of thread needed to create 1000 Hermes carrés is equal to the distance between the earth and the moon. Engraving the printing screens for each design can take 400 to 600 hours and sometimes more. For complex designs such as Les Jardins d'Andalusie, 1,500 to 2,000 hours of engraving was needed. And to date, Hermes scarves are created in the same way they were nearly a century ago. Silk scraped by hand with the hems hand stitched and hand rolled. It takes anywhere from 6 to 18 months to produce a single scarf. Over 2,000 patterns by more than 150 artists have been issued by Hermes since 1937, many of which become limited edition re-releases of old designs or others which are completely phased out to make way for new ones. It's said that an Hermes scarf is sold every 20 seconds and they've graced the likes of many fashion icons such as Audrey Hepburn, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, Grace Kelly, and more. In fact, the Queen of England is another well-known Hermes scarf aficionado and reportedly even wore one in 1956 for a stamp portrait. Hermes relies on a global team of independent freelance designers to fuel its scarf creation. Once a design is chosen for production, it's digitally scanned where an artist outlines the design on a screen. This outline is then sent to the color department, where up to 15 different colorways are conceived and out of which typically 8 to 10 make it to the stores. Colors may be specially mixed and or taken from the fashion house's library. Each step of the process involves artisans who bring their vision and expertise to the final product, each touching the scarf's four corners with their talents. 
Anyone who's handled an Hermes scarf immediately recognizes its incomparable and tangible quality. From the weight of the silk, since only the highest grade of silk is used for its strength and thickness through the months-long engraving processes to meticulously transpose each design from paper to silk to the hand-rolled hems of 15 millimeters, no more or less, and 90-degree corners. Every step is taken with careful precision, resulting in wearable works of art, each over two years in the making. Hermes issues two scarf collections a year, one for spring-summer and another for fall-winter. Each design is a testament to the French house's singular approach to craftsmanship, thoughtful, trend agnostic, and with a high regard for its artisan designers. Hermes scarf designers can be found in all parts of the world and each with their own distinctive viewpoint and aesthetic. Some of my personal favorites include the likes of Annie Fevre, Dmitry Rybalchenko, Aline Honoré, and Alice Shirley, to name a few. Hermès is always looking for talent to create new designs and sometimes reinvent classic ones, so aesthetically speaking, there's usually something you can find that speaks to you. Storytelling is another huge part of what makes an Hermès scarf special. Each tells a tale as unique as the artists who bring them to life, from the abstract to realist, fantastical and whimsical. I enjoy learning about the artists and what inspires them and understanding what lies behind the designs. Certainly you can enjoy art simply at a surface level, but peeling back the layers is another aspect I enjoy about the Hermes collections. Mind you, I don't necessarily get every scarf designed by my favorite artists, but I've found that once you realize there's a given aesthetic that attracts you, consistently, and you're drawn in by the story, for me, that makes it much more likely that I'll go back for more. The pendulum on logos has swung back and forth over the years. You may prefer logos everywhere. The more the better, and if so, good for you. I get it. For me, though, one of the things that I love about Hermes scarves is that they're so under the radar in that regard. Unless you know what it is, they don't scream Hermes, and I enjoy that feeling of discreet luxury and spoiling myself. I'm not trying to draw attention by wearing an Hermes scarf. I wear them because they're beautiful and practical and one of those wardrobe investments that I can enjoy for a lifetime. And yes, I do see the irony with other brands that I buy. Burberry is a great example. I love their coats and jackets, which do have that distinct Nova check pattern. But again, if it's on the coat lining or a hint on the sleeve, it's not in your face like some other things can be. Others may have different feelings on this. Ultimately, you know what works best for you. But for me, the under the radar discretion is one of the many reasons I've collected Hermes scarves versus others over the years. Hermes uses only the finest materials in their scarves. That means silk twill, cashmere, and the occasional silk cotton blend. I appreciate that Hermes scarves are at quite a price point, no question. These are luxury items, not necessities. But again, this is a matter of preference. For me, I would rather spend more for a quality item that I can enjoy over many years versus something less expensive that I may end up replacing. Also, it may just be a rationalization, but honestly, if you think about it on a cost per wear basis, especially over the years, they're really not that expensive. I'll give you an example. My first 90 centimeter cahe cost $125 and it was a gift. I've had that scarf literally for over 35 years now and worn it countless times. So even on an annual basis, that's literally less than what you'd spend for a cup of Starbucks coffee. Not bad for one of these iconic pieces, right? At the end of the day, I'm not trying to convince you whether to go with Hermes. Only you know what's right for you. But these are some of the many reasons why I exclusively collect Hermes scarves. I certainly don't refuse non-Hermes scarves as gifts, but if I'm buying, I have my preferences. So there you have it. 
Please like this video if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf reviews, not tutorials, and more, so be sure to subscribe to be notified of updates. And also check out my Naughty Corner playlist for ways to style your Hermes scarves. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time!